Genesis chapter 35 Then God said to Jacob, Go up to Bethel and settle there, and build an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Get rid of the foreign gods you have with you, and purify yourselves and change your clothes. Then come, let us go up to Bethel, where I will build an altar to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and who has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods they had, and the rings in their ears, and Jacob buried them under the oak at Shechem. Then they set out, and the terror of God fell on the towns all around them, so that no one pursued them. Jacob and all the people with him came to Luz, that is Bethel, in the land of Canaan. There he built an altar, and he called the place El Bethel, because it was there that God revealed himself to him when he was fleeing from his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died and was buried under the oak outside Bethel, so it was named Alon Bakath. After Jacob returned from Paddan Aram, God appeared to him again and blessed him. God said to him, Your name is Jacob, but you will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be Israel. So he named him Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and increase in number. A nation and a community of nations will come from you, and kings will be among your descendants. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac I also give to you, and I will give this land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from him at the place where he had talked with him. Jacob set up a stone pillar at the place where God had talked with him, and he poured out a drink offering on it. He also poured oil on it. Jacob called the place where God had talked with him Bethel. Then they moved on from Bethel. While they were still some distance from Ephra, Rachel began to give birth and had great difficulty. And as she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, Don't despair, for you have another son. As she breathed her last, for she was dying, she named her son Ben-Oni, but his father named him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephra, that is Bethlehem. Over her tomb Jacob set up a pillar, and to this day that pillar marks Rachel's tomb. Israel moved on again and pitched his tent beyond Migdal Ida. While Israel was living in that region, Reuben went in and slept with his father's concubine Bilhah, and Israel heard of it. Jacob had twelve sons. The sons of Leah, Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin, the sons of Rachel's servant Bilhah, Dan and Naphtali, the sons of Leah's servant Zilpah, Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Paddan Aram. Jacob came home to his father Isaac in Mamre, near Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had stayed. Isaac lived a hundred and eighty years. Then he breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people, old and full of years. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Genesis chapter 36 This is the account of the family line of Esau, that is, Edom. Esau took his wives from the women of Canaan. 
Ada, daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Aholibama, daughter of Ana and granddaughter of Zibion the Hittite, and Basimath, daughter of Ishmael and sister of Nebaioth. Ada bore Eliphaz to Esau, Basimath bore Ruel, and Aholibama bore Jeush, Jalem, and Korah. These were the sons of Esau who were born to him in Canaan. Esau took his wives and sons and daughters and all the members of his household as well as his livestock and all his other animals and all the goods he had acquired in Canaan and moved to a land some distance from his brother Jacob. Their possessions were too great for them to remain together. The land where they were staying could not support them both because of their livestock. So Esau, that is Edom, settled in the hill country of Seir. This is the account of the family line of Esau, the father of the Edomites, in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Esau's wife, Ada, and Ruel, the son of Esau's wife, Basimath. The sons of Eliphaz, Timan, Oma, Zepho, Getim, and Kenaz. Esau's son, Eliphaz, also had a concubine named Timnah, who bore him Amalek. These were grandsons of Esau's wife, Ada. The sons of Ruel, Nehath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mitzah. These were grandsons of Esau's wife, Basimah. The sons of Esau's wife, Aholibama, daughter of Ana and granddaughter of Zibion, whom she bore to Esau, Jeosh, Jalam, and Korah. These were the chiefs among Esau's descendants. The sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Esau, chiefs Timan, Oma, Zepho, Kenaz, Korah, Gatim, and Amalek. These were the chiefs descended from Eliphaz in Edom. They were grandsons of Ada. The sons of Esau's son, Ruel, chiefs Nehal, Zira, Shama, and Mitzah. These were the chiefs descended from Ruel in Edom. They were grandsons of Esau's wife, Basimath. The sons of Esau's wife, Aholibama. Chiefs, Jeosh, Jalem, and Korah. These were the chiefs descended from Esau's wife, Aholibama, daughter of Ana. These were the sons of Esau, that is Edom, and these were their chiefs. These were the sons of Seir, the Horite, who were living in the region. Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Ana, Daishon, Ezer, and Daishan. These sons of Seir in Edom were Horite chiefs. The sons of Lotan. Horai and Homam. Timna was Lotan's sister. The sons of Shobal. Alvan, Manahath, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. The sons of Zibion. Ea and Ana. This is the Ana who discovered the hot springs in the desert while he was grazing the donkeys of his father, Zibion. The children of Ana, Daishon and Aholibama, daughter of Ana. The sons of Daishon, Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Kiran. The sons of Ezer, Bilhan, Zevan, and Achan. The sons of Daishan, Az and Aran. These were the Horite chiefs, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Ana, Daishon, Ezer, and Daishan. These were the Horite chiefs according to their divisions in the land of Seir. These were the kings who reigned in Edom before any Israelite king reigned. Bela, son of Beor, became king of Edom. His city was named Dinhaba. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zerah from Bozrah, succeeded him as king. When Jobab died, Husham from the land of the Tamanites succeeded him as king. When Husham died, Hadad, son of Bedad, who defeated Midian in the country of Moab, succeeded him as king. His city was named Avith. When Hadad died, Samla from Mazrakah succeeded him as king. When Samla died, Sheul from Rehoboth on the river succeeded him as king. When Sheul died, Baal Hanan, son of Akbor, succeeded him as king. 
When Baal Hanan, son of Akbor, died, Hadad succeeded him as king. His city was named Peyu, and his wife's name was Mehetabel, daughter of Metred, the daughter of Mezahab. These were the chiefs descended from Esau, by name according to their clans and regions. Timna, Aliba, Jepheth, Aholibama, Elah, Pinon, Kiza, Timon, Mibza, Magdiel, and Iram. These were the chiefs of Edom according to their settlements in the land they occupied. This is the family line of Esau, the father of the Edomites. Genesis chapter 37 Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of seventeen, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of corn out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered round mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They've moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns, and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, 
his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for twenty shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites, who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, The boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat and dipped the robe in the blood. They took the ornate robe back to their father and said, We found this. Examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. He recognized it and said, It is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. Psalm 12 Help, Lord, for no one is faithful any more. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. May the Lord silence all flattering lips and every boastful tongue. Those who say, by our tongues we will prevail, our own lips will defend us, who is Lord over us? Because the poor are plundered and the needy groan, I will now arise, says the Lord. I will protect them from those who malign them. And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. You, Lord, will keep the needy safe and will protect us forever from the wicked who freely strut about when what is vile is honored by the human race.